Hello, I am the Irish guy, and welcome to the annual 40 stupidest football moments of the year. Um, I know this is January 4th. So what? You didn't think I was gonna do this one. You thought that I had just forgot it. Thought that I was too busy licking the scarf clean in the bath, but no. I mean, th this is filthier than ever. And yes, let's see the stupidest things that happened in football in 2023. And that's... I think this might just have been the dumbest year yet. Right, let's go. January. Hang it out inside Ralph Weghorst. It's weird. Uh, at the beginning of last season, Manji Steinen were heavily linked to the move for Marko Anatovic, only scuppering those plans because the supporters reacted to the news as if they'd just been invited to eat sloppy ice cream off their dead granddad's stomach. Oh, okay, fine. The fans clearly want only elite strikers, not troublesome argumentative sausages with all the natural talent of poison gravy. So they go back into the market to get Wout Wickhorse instead. And I know you pronounce the W's with a V, but he's so bad, I don't even want to have to pronounce his name properly. He doesn't deserve that. In the same way some disgruntled Arsenal fans kept calling him Arsene Wenger. And he'd been there for 20 odd years. Lads, this guy was last season's Odeon and Gallo. But even worse, because yes, a Gallo was a January joke signing, but at least he was signed to mostly eat popcorn and look happy on the bench. Weghorst, a guy who wasn't deemed good enough for Burnley, he managed to cram in 31 games for Manchester United into just five months. They relied on him more than Johnny Depp relies on Jin to help him through the day. And just like a Gallo, zero Premier League goals, mostly just looking like an awkward scarecrow lingering around the penalty spot. I'm half shocked he didn't have any rebellious pigeons deciding to fight back by showering him with nervous poo. This signing was a joke. February. Chelsea signed Enzo for £106 million. This was single-handedly the most reckless and arrogant disregard for money that I have ever seen in my life, lads. Enzo Fernandes is clearly a quality midfielder, but Chelsea could have signed him for just £8 million in the summer of 2022. That is how much Benfica had paid to take him from River Plate. Clearly, nobody at Stamford Bridge had a clue who he was. Uh, yeah, one World Cup win later, and they're hastily writing a club record paycheck for £106 million? What? There should be a rule that if you're going to pay 100 million pounds for someone, you have to prove you knew who they were a year before. By the way, if you're here, try to get to 200k as soon as possible. If you want to hit that subscribe button, you would be the biggest legend on the planet. If you want to see more stuff like this in 2024, hit that button. You absolute legends. Back in the video. Everton's official calendar. This is hilarious. Imagine being a little Everton fan who's received a nice club calendar of Santa Claus for Christmas. Yeah, your spirits are a little low. Your club just ended January sitting 19th in the league after zero wins in eight games. But fine, February's another month. You turn the page and guess who's smiling back at you? Yeah, Anthony Gordon, the guy who just walked out on you for Newcastle in a 45 million pound deal literally just two days before. Imagine any Everton fan proudly hanging his face on their bedroom wall for the month of February. It's probably a little bit like getting dumped by your wife. And so, I mean, instead of getting back out there, you choose to spend an entire month watching your wedding video on loop whilst drunkenly phoning your cousin for a kiss. But to be fair, Newcastle ruined Everton's calendar by stealing a scouser. This happened to Toon fans too, though, when Liverpool robbed a Geordie. Back in 2011, Andy Carroll was Newcastle's designated player for February on the calendar. Literally a day after he just left the club. Yeah, I'd imagine most angry Geordies would rather have had February be a photo of their mum on the toilet than Carroll. Martin Dubravka wins medal. The goalkeeping situation surrounding the League Cup final was a complete and utter joke. For Newcastle versus Manchester United, Nick Pope had just got himself suspended, while second choice Martin Dubravka was back at St. James' Park by then, yeah, but he was still ineligible to play because he'd already competed in that competition for Manchester United whilst on low before Christmas. So Loris Carius, a bloke who ruined his career forever in 2018, he was having to play in the final. Weirdly, Ben Foster had rejected a summer move to Newcastle, right? So he, he would have played in this final. A League Cup final against his old club at 39 years of age. Imagine how good that vlog would have done. It would have trended for weeks. But anyway, what's even freakier about this whole situation is that the Bravka, despite being a Newcastle, won a League Cup medal because his own team lost. So what? In a depressed changing room, why, he just sat in the corner in his suit, silently fist pumping and sending laughing emojis to his wife? Weird. Nathan Jones' interviews. Just, just Nathan Jones. During his brief stint as Southampton manager, he went full on David Brent, telling the world that he'd been one of the best coaches in Europe at Luton, and he'd been pandering to Southampton's egos because they were big, scary Premier League players? Oh, Christ above, he was a disaster. March. Liverpool 7, Man United 0. This was single-handedly the most surreal second half of football I've ever seen in my life. Honestly, the weirdest, most shocking first half I ever saw happen in July 2014, when Germany raced into a 5-0 lead over Brazil in a World Cup semi-final. Nothing will ever top the weirdness of that first half, 
squad here. Seeing Liverpool score six without reply in the second 45 minutes against their greatest rivals. Sitting there watching that game on TV, it felt a bit like I was watching an alien from Mars literally biting off Jonathan Ross's head. And yeah, without a doubt, the biggest, most unforgivable stain in Manchester United's recent history. And Eric Ten Hag is still there? Nearly a year down the line? What is going on? Antonio Conte's meltdown. This was weird, but was it? Antonio Conte left Tottenham in March after absolutely firing off on his own players in an explosive post-match interview after they chucked away a lead to draw 3-3 at bottom club Southampton. The guy was so angry. It looked like the veins in his neck would burst like an overinflated frog balloon, but people think this is shocking. I don't. Ever since Conte initially rejected Spurs in the summer of 2021, ever since he was questioning his own future after just three months, this is exactly how this was always gonna happen. Maybe I'm not so good. Conte questioned Spurs future after Burnley loss. This was February 2022. The fact Conte lasted more than a year in the job after that, that alone is the shocking part. Flamengo paid the wrong Joe Gomez. This is just all kinds of strange. Joe Gomez is the new Brazilian wonder kid midfielder who rocked up at Wolves in a 50 million pound deal in Feb in January. Well, it transpired that as part of the deal, Flamengo would then pay Gomez a fee of £306,000 for his image rights. Yeah, and um, according to Brazilian publication Globo, he didn't receive the money. Instead, it went to a different Joe Gomez, some bloke who plays basketball. Yeah, Gomez plays the sport in the Brazilian amateur leagues. So receiving a third of a million pounds into his bank account when he was probably living with his grandma and having to ask his Tinder dates if they can pay for dinner. Oh, he was probably doing confused cartwheels down the street. The guy was probably so excited. He must have looked like Jim Carrey after 13 cups of coffee. Referee <laughs> uses fans phone in Turkey. Yeah, this was Strange. In mid-March, a late goal was ruled out during the Egyptian second division match because the referee, Mohamed Farouk, chose to use a fan's phone as a replacement for VAR. It was a game between Swaz, SC and Al Nasser. Yeah, Al Nasser thought they'd scored a late equaliser, but no, Farouk overturned it after just looking at the replay on someone's phone. Doesn't seem really professional that in order to rule out a goal, you're having to ignore the Pokemon screensaver and the incoming WhatsApp messages from the bloke's grandma reminding him to bring home some scrambled egg for tea. The goal was overturned. There were 50 minutes of stoppage time, Al Nasser wound up losing 3-1, and the referee had to leave the ground under police protection. <laughs> Weird. April. Andy Robertson gets elbowed by linesman. Remember back in April when Liverpool drew 2-2 with Arsenal in an epic Easter clash? And then Andy Robertson complained because he said the referee, Konstantinos Hadidakis, had elbowed him, prompting Roy Keane to call him a baby. Very strange. Ben Foster's dramatic penalty save. Lads, there are so many parts about the Wrexham story that just look scripted beyond belief. I know that they're not, but ever since Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney arrived into town, there's been so many stupidly dramatic games since they took over in February 2021. There is that stupendous last minute 6-5 win over Dover in March 2022. In October of that year, there was an insane 7-5 win over Barnet. There was an epic up 3-3 draw at home with Sheffield United last year. And even this season, there was a 5-5 draw home with Swindon Town, but this one is the most ridiculous. Wrexham versus Notts County. With just a few games left of the season, both teams were tied at the top of the National League on 100 points each. And what happened here was mega weird. First of all, former Chris Palace wonder kid John Bostock slaps in a world-class free kick for Notts. By the way, um, that was his first goal in nearly seven years. A fella who once rejected Barcelona, scoring past a former Manchester United and England goalkeeper in the conference? That was weird in itself. But Wrexham wound up winning 3-2 after Ben Foster saves a 96-minute penalty. If this was boxing, you'd have people screaming that it was rigged. This is more dramatic than any Deadpool script. It was just... Wow! Did that really happen? Newcastle 6, Tottenham 1. I spoke of Man United losing 7-0 at Liverpool as being the biggest Premier League disgrace result of 2023, right? That result was wet garbage. But Christian Stellini produced the biggest tactical blunder of 2023. The fact that Conte's right-hand man was still in the Tottenham job was really weird. Not least because he looks like a terrifying CGI goblin from a Hobbit film. He clearly wanted to put his own stamp on the team. So, after Conte had made Spurs play the previous two years with three at the back, Stellini decides to rock up to a daunting St. James's Park and go 4-3-3. Lads, Pedro Paro and Ivan Perisic are essentially wingers. Wingers without a defensive thought in their brain, asking them to play as rigid fullbacks. It's a bit like asking a blind man to make you a pie. Yeah, um, enjoy picking his fingernails out of the crumbs. This was the most ridiculous first half match in any European game of 2023. This was supposed to be a hotly contested top four battle. Just three points that separated the teams. Yeah, um... Newcastle were 5 0 up after 20 minutes, with poor old Pape Sar being whipped off the pitch after 20 minutes, so Spurs could go to 3 at the back. No wonder Stellini hasn't worked a minute since. May. Juventus' points deduction. Juventus are at it again. This was strange. Juventus were initially docked 15 points by the Italian FA for false accounting. That was then reduced to 10, but still, in that moment, they dropped from being second and in a title race with Napoli to seventh. To be fair, at least it's not as bad as 2006 when they went from first 
to 20th Josie Mourinho's microphone. Some people have said that Josie Mourinho has become a cranky, paranoid wretch in his older years. And I've always said, No, no, you're just jealous. And um, so here he was wearing a microphone in his clothes during Roma's match with Monza in order to protect himself from the referee. I love Josie, but that does sound suspiciously. Like when your granddad chooses to wear a hat made of tin foil so that the government hidden aliens can't steal his thoughts. Leeds appoint Big Sam. Was this a joke? Leeds United appointing Sam Allardyce to save them from the job with four games left. It looked like satire. The previous year, they had Marcelo Bielsa at the wheel. How could you get this so wrong? This was like a rumor that the joke pages on Facebook would recommend. So the sight of Big Sam rocking up another road with a newly combed quiff and without a hamburger in sight. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Four games. Four games! Big Sam is a man who spent his entire career denying that he's all about the money and just making a quick and easy buck. And so he chose to take a month-long contract worth a basic salary of £500,000. You know, the same lump of cash you make for becoming the world champion at darts? This is a gig where if he was successful and kept leads up, he would add a bonus of nearly three million pounds? Come on! June, Moldova 3, Poland 2. This was strange. Here was a Euro 2024 qualifying match and Poland. At halftime, we're tuning up and coasting against a Moldova team who were ranked 171st in the world. Poland had just beaten Germany. We're armed with one of the best goal machines to ever live, while Moldova had only won one qualifying match in the previous 10 years. Yeah, Poland lost 3-2. What happened? June. Alal Al signed Ruben Neves. This was just sad. Ruben Neves is the epitome of untapped potential. This guy who was a Portugal wonder kid. Portugal's youngest ever captain. Playing in the Champions League at 18. He then joins Wolves in the Championship when he's 20. That alone looked dodgier than Jake Paul's hairline. He spent six years at Molyneux, but it's fine. He was about to make the next step in his career and realize his potential in Europe by playing for his dream club, Barcelona. Xavi was on the brink of signing him. They'd even agreed a 26 million pound deal in May, right? And then he goes to Saudi instead, where he's earning 300,000 pounds a week with zero tax. I mean, to be fair, it is going well for him. He's won 21 of the 24 games he's played. He was recently scoring two goals in a 9-0 win away from home. He bagged himself another goal in a 7-0 win at home. But it's too easy. It's far too easy for a man in his prime. July. Alal Al bid for Kylian Mbappe. 2023 was the year of the most bonkers offer that a football player has ever been made. Kylian Mbappe was forced to turn down an Alal Al offer of £19 a second to chuck his European career in a bin. Alal Al were offering PSG £259 million and Mbappe Mbappe himself, a £50 million a month contract. He'd have been earning in an hour. What Brennan Johnson makes in a week, that would be over £1,000 a minute. And what's even weirder is that apparently Al Alal would have agreed to sell him to Real Madrid after a year. I won't lie, when Mbappe was seeing his team embarrassed 4 1 at Newcastle in the Champions League, part of him evil, greedy little devil on his shoulder was probably annoyed that he wasn't instead chilling with a camel, earning 20 quid every time he blinked. August, Burnley's weird unveilings. James Trafford probably thought this summer would be the one where he was finally taken seriously. This was just some unknown Man City reserve team goalie whose only claim to fame amongst the kids was the fact that he was Thogden's pretend twin on the internet. Are you his real brother? It was probably scattered across every one of Trafford's Instagram posts, but he then helps England win the under-21 European Championships in the summer without conceding a goal. And he even saved a penalty in the final. Finally, people are going to treat him with respect. And then he signs for Burnley and gets unveiled on a Teletubby stomach. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my name is Zeki Amdouni. I am very happy to be here. Oh, no, sorry. That was... Um... That was Zibdi Mooney. Sorry, uh, wrong one. No, Trafford, <laughs> he got a far more respectful announcement. Um, he was part of a Back to the Future meme. September, Jao Polini's barn collapse. I don't know why this story isn't spoken about more. Lads, Peter Olawingi has become a transfer ghost story after stupidly parking outside QPR's training ground to force to remove. But Jao Polina. This is even more devastating. The Portuguese midfielder had agreed a dream move to Bayern Munich. The clubs had agreed a fee. He was in Germany being unveiled in a new kit, but they then ran out of time. The deadline shut. And so we have to go back to Fulham. It's cruel beyond belief. It's like bringing your excited kid to Disneyland Paris. And once you get to the front gate, you then remember. Oh, actually, I forgot. You've got a dentist appointment at 3 p.m. Ah, uh, let's get you back to Hull instead. The kid would be so disgusted. He'd probably then punch Mickey Mouse in the groin. Poor Jow. Czech team signed student. How embarrassing is this? Here we have a Czech Republic third division side, FK Usti, who um chose to sign a 22-year-old student who has never played football before, and he wasn't even cheap. Martin Pajaski, someone who looks like he's creepily obsessed with the Marvel Universe, watching every film in between mouthfuls of cookies and chicken wings. His dad paid 17.5 thousand pounds to secure his son a place in the squad, which guarantees him at least 10 minutes of first team football this season. Imagine receiving that as a birthday present. Just, just get him an Xbox, buy him a Thor shirt. Don't embarrass the child by forcing him into a competitive athletic dressing room when he looks like the real life version of Peter Griffin. We will lead 3-0. 
will put him in the attack for 10 minutes, he will replace Mares. Cuban explained. If his dad will give us 500,000 Corona for 10 minutes, sorry, we don't have any sponsors. His dad is paying over 17 grand to see his chunky son embarrassed in a professional football match. What's he gonna do for his next birthday party? Pay 50 grand for him to go on a painfully awkward date with Reese with a spoon? Weird. No Harry Kane hat trick. Harry Kane scored his first hat trick for Bayern Munich in September, except that he didn't. This is a man who hates being denied goals. Just ask Christian Eriksen. And here he was, being forced to justify in an interview why he was taking on the match ball after an 8-0 win over Darmstadt. Because apparently in Germany, a hat-trick isn't a hat-trick unless you scored the three goals in one half with no other players netting in between. What kind of weird rule is that? Not everyone in the Bundesliga can do a Lewandowski and score five goals in nine minutes. John Joe Shelby loaned out. Uh, okay, on paper, this doesn't look that strange. John Joe Shelby, he fell out with Steve Cooper and Nottingham Forest. Although, if we're talking about ex-Swansea coaches, I'd have expected him to wind up in a fight with Potter, possibly with both using wands, screaming a vada cadaver in each other's face. But that's Shelby Lee's Forest all alone for a sidecar reason spur in Turkey. Fine. Looks above board. Great. But it's four months down the line and Forest are having to explain themselves here because it turns out that they actually terminated Shelby's contract and so he joined Psycho on a free. So why? Why did the original statement announce it as a loan? Why was it written everywhere, including the official Premier League website, that it was a loan? It's just bafflingly weird. It was a bit like trying to break the news of divorce to the kids. So the mother just pretends that daddy has gone to live in India for work purposes, when the reality is that he's just three blocks down the road and is on the pressing one bed flat, trying to get a kiss off Sheila from work. It's fine. You don't need to break the news gently to Forest fans. I don't think they care. If Shelby's gone forever, just tell them. Luis Diaz's offside goal versus Spurs. Yeah, pretty simple. I remember back in the 18-19 season, Liverpool were only denied becoming the new Invincibles because of John Stones miraculously clearing the ball off the line in the Reds' only defeat of the season. Liverpool were 1.12 centimeters away from winning the Premier League title, going the whole season without a loss. And here, I can't help but feel that if Liverpool don't lose another league game this season, then this time, it'll be because of VAR cheating them out of being the next Invincibles after weirdly chalking off Luis Diaz's perfectly good opener because they thought it was onside. Without drawing any lines? Ah, weird. October. Ireland should lose to Holland. It has been a nightmare year for the Republic of Ireland. We currently don't have a manager. I'm gonna freak out if it's Steve Bruce. But yeah, because of the whole Nations League distraction, we played a Euro 2024 qualifying match against Holland, knowing that it was actually beneficial for us if we lost. Because it would mess up the Nations League. Ah, I, you know what? I thought... I don't, I, I don't, I'm just going to leave it there because I'm just going to get two, two and... How, how can that happen? Oh, international football is a mess. Birmingham hire Wayne Rooney. It is bizarre to see history repeat itself. It doesn't matter who owns Birmingham City. It seems like they are in the business of self-sabotage. Back in 2016, they were a joke. Sacking Gary Bowes, who had them seventh in the championship in mid-December, only outside the playoffs on goal difference. They replaced him with a big star name. An ex-world-class superstar in Gianfranco Zola. It doesn't work. He wins just two of his 24 games in charge and was sacked in April with the team 20th in the league. Yeah, they've done it again. John Eustace is sacked in October with the team sixth in the league. In comes Wayne Rooney. Again, like Zola, only wins two games, is sacked with a win percentage of 13.3%, with Birmingham yet again 20th. Eustace is now even linked with a return. It's almost a completely identical situation to their self-inflicted car crash mess in 2016. That is so weird. November, Portland Timbers appoint Phil Neville. Phil Neville's management career baffles me. Because his brother was best man at David Beckham's wedding to a Spice Girl back in the 90s, the ripple effect means that Phil is now Mr. America, a failed England women's coach who really uh, has since managed Inter Miami, was briefly Canada assistant boss to some former uni lecturer from Durham, and now he's been appointed manager of MLS side Portland Timbers. On a contract until 2026, this former Valencia coach has managed what JLS never could Good. Crack America! Dads, this is just a 14-year-old football club. I'm convinced he only took the job because, well, his dream is obviously to be Manchester United boss, right? Well, this way, he still gets to coach a frustrating Brazilian called Anthony on the wing. He's just role-playing the job of Eric Ten Hag. I wonder if this Anthony also clearly takes relationship advice from Chris Brown. Saudi Pro League's terrible attendance. The Saudi Pro League was supposed to be on its way to becoming one of the top five leagues in the world, right? Yeah, on November, in a match between Al Weda and Al Khalish, in a 38,000 seater stadium, there were 447 fans. That means that 0.01% of this stadium was filled. You get better attendances in semi-pro football. More than one billion pounds spent on the league in 2023. And yet, nobody wants to watch. The following week, 264 people turned up to watch a match in a 22,000 seater ground. Jordan Anderson played a game for Al Etifak in front of 976 fans. The lowest attendance was 133 supporters watching Al Ryan lose to Al Okrut. Lads, I film with someone for the football shorts I do on this channel. 
he plays semi-professional football and he gets more fans. Him. He gets more fans than Liverpool's Champions League winning captain. <laughs> what is going on? That is so embarrassing. I'm like, cry. Corinthians goalie, let's free kick in. Yeah, there was a game in Brazil where the Corinthians goalie Cassio made no attempt to save a free kick. Just slightly squirming as the ball went near him. Like a five-year-old trying to dodge a spider. Weird. Everton deducted 10 points. Yeah, here we had Everton being deducted 10 points for financial irregularities. Plunging them back into the relegation zone and forcing me to stink of more milk. Oh, how fun was that? Barnsley kicked out of FA Cup. When you speak of the great FA Cup giant killing runs, I think of Barnsley in 2008. They were rubbish, bottom half championship strugglers. And yet reached the FA Cup semi-final, knocking out both Liverpool and Chelsea. The fact they did all that hard work and were then denied an FA Cup final against Portsmouth, a really winnable match just because they lost to Cardiff in the semis. Surely one of their great regrets. Anyway, Anyway, here they are getting kicked out of the FA Cup this season for fielding an ineligible player. Meaning that tiny little Horsham take their place in the next round? Ah, strange. December. Harry Redknapp out of retirement. Look, Harry Redknapp is no stranger to coming out of retirement for weird jobs. But I thought that it all stopped when he chose to sit in a jungle with the vamps. Coming out of retirement to coach a few games at Jordan and Birmingham. That was strange, yeah, but it was seven years ago. Well, here he is, four years off 80. Having grown so bored of eating scones with his wife. Earlier in the year, he was saying he wanted the Leeds job. But instead... After being overlooked for Big Sam, he's now a, a backroom coach for Sim Albion, the worst team in Britain. A team in the Swansea Senior League who lost all 22 games this season. Redknapp is helping to coach a team with a goal difference of minus 191. Their goalkeeper, Jamie McDonald, hasn't had a clean sheet in the 10 years he's been at the club. One of their current fielders, John Rees, is 73 years old and has been on their books for 50 years. Yes, 73. Redknapp is coaching a central fielder who's only three years younger than him. What is going on? Saudi Pro League stupid handball. Yeah, there was a game in the Saudi Pro League between Al Hassam and Al Fati. The latter managed by Slavin Bilic, where the most stupid penalty of all time was conceded. The goalkeeper came out to collect the ball. His defender tried to high five him, and when he did so, he accidentally stroked the ball with his hand. Penalty. Handball. Lunacy. Giving away a penalty for trying to high five your goalie? Does he have potato for brains? Welsh club handed 141 point deduction. Are Man City scared yet? Because just weeks after everything's points deduction. Welsh side Pontypridd United were told that they could be facing a mammoth 141 points deduction in relation to player contract breaches and fielding eligible players. 141. Ren versus Valarial Golden Knight. Yeah, here we have Ren losing 3-2 to Valarial in the Europa League. Ren then scored a 101st minute equalizing goal, but it was ruled out due to a VAR check. It was disallowed. Get this, because the first person to touch the ball after the free kick was taken was the player who initially took it. I've been watching football since 2004, and even I didn't know that was a rule. So I'm guessing neither did most of the players on the pitch. Surely you'd have to be a bookworm nerd to even know that was a thing. Brennan Johnson's shirt. Nothing to see here, just Brennan Johnson playing a full Premier League match against Newcastle without a Tottenham crest on his shirt? Ah... What? Dean Smith at Charlotte FC. Most of you won't have a clue that Dean Smith, after his Leicester City relegation, is actually back in football. It seems like only five minutes ago he was sticking seven goals past Jurgen Klopp. Now he's boss of Charlotte FC in the MLS. I'm surprised anybody in America knew who he was. He used to coach future 100 million pound megastars. Now his star player is actually Westwood. Remember him? Anyway, the weirdest thing is in his contract, where it states you have to agree to one TikTok a month as deemed necessary by the social media team, and that he would have a weekly meeting with the club mascot, Sir Minty. Some creepy punctured football with arms and legs? Is this really Smith's life now? Where even his official contract is now just a big joke? Joey Barton. J just jo Joey Barton tweets, really, um... Why? <laughs> It feels so random. Palmer Screen Rovers appoint Troy Deeney. Does anyone think that it's weird that Troy Deeney, yes, big Troy, someone who looks like a cannibal, is um now the football manager of a hipster vegan club? Yes, vegan. He looks like he eats his own family members with a knife and fork. And finally, this. Turkish football league suspended after Ankara president punches referee. What a weird year this has been. Anyway, that's the video. Let me know what do you think. All right, let me know what stupid moments did I miss. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, subscribe. As always, I'll talk to you in a while.